Hello and welcome to the Armorer, it's me Blue and today I want to show you a game versus uh, Fatigue Bravo using a list very close to the one that I used uh, at our Nationals uh, with Azuri. Um, I'm going to have a full deck breakdown of the list that I use at Nationals later, uh, but for now I just want to show a uh, interesting in my opinion game versus um, a Fatigue Bravo. Um, that I played some time ago. Here he goes for just a straight up Starstruck turn 1. Uh, I believe his line of thought is um, this is going to demand at least 3 card blocks for me and his idea is to just fatigue me and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, and I'm going to save my fate for scene because I very much valued my ability to just uh, keep a defense reaction in my arsenal uh, until the Bravo decides to keep three cards and try and dominate me and then I just punish him with like a Fate for Scene from Arsenal, three block from hand and like a one block equipment, um, the worst case scenario. So that's the reasoning why I kept it. Uh, and here we're going to see just uh, Codex of Frailty play. Uh, I decided to play Codex of Frailty here because I know the only card in his arsenal is going to cost 7 resources and that's going to be incredibly hard to uh, pay, especially when he's, he'll have to discard the card to the Codex and also I'm going to be attacking him with a Dead Touch which is going to present uh, a good on hit as well as a bunch of damage. I'm going to decide and hold the Shred because I know that the Star Strike is almost impossible to play out from this position and even if he decides to do so, I'm going to be extremely happy because I'm, I'm just going to choose Blood Rot if he, if he keeps everything um, and he's predictably not going to keep everything. Uh, I'm going to pass on the reactions here because I do not care if I do 3 less damage. He's going to play his unmovable and now I'm going to shred. And this is the power of shred, this is why I love shred. It's because it's punishing uh, these hands so, so much, right? Like he used his entire hand, he used 3 cards in order to block my dead touch and at the end of the day I'm going to deal the one damage and I'm also going to get my inertia which is going to get rid of his arsenal um, and I'm just like very far ahead right like now he doesn't even have the arsenal to uh, lie back on because technically he can use tunic uh, not tunic but plating can at one point just come in for uh, six resources for ten or something but that's no longer an option. I'm going to go for um, E-Strike, uh, CNC, uh, just roll damage. He's going to start blocking here, which makes sense, right? He's fatigued, bravo, he wants to be blocking. Uh, and the CNC here is going to take two cards away from him, despite him not having an arsenal, but I think he just wants to arsenal and pass. Like, he had like three red cards or something like this in that hand. Um, and he just doesn't want to take free damage. So, it might... In my turn here, I'm, I'm just going to go for daggers, right? Like, this is a very good hand in which um, you can use your entire hand to just present daggers, right? Because technically I can just go shakedown, but in order to activate the shakedown, I'll have to give up on my equipment, which I value very much because the one block lines up so perfectly to make eight block with the defense reaction from Arsenal and a three block from hand. And I'm just going to present Plunder the Poor, which is like a good enough on hit in this matchup, especially when we're fighting for uh, deck size. And he's just going to go and block with his second unmovable. So two unmovables down. And I'm very glad about that. I'm very, very glad about the unmovables. He's going to pitch a staunch response, revealing that he plays red staunch responses and one is going uh, down on the bottom of the deck. So yeah, uh, here I'm just going to block the hammer and then I believe I'm going for uh, Nerf Scalpel. The reason why I'm playing Nerf Scalpel, and I mean the reason I'm playing Nerf Scalpel is obvious, but um, something that you learn playing Kuzuri is that when you want to attack with your four power cards with your contracts you want to attack with Nerf Scalpel before that especially when you're anticipating your opponents playing defense reactions because that means that they have to commit more than just a 0 for 4 defense reaction in order to block your cards which is exactly what we forced him to do and now we forced his uh, legs and the card 
and the sink below from hand, right? Because he could not just use sink below on our uh, leave no witness. Um, so yeah, uh, here we just trade reactions, but that's fine because we not only trade reactions, but he also traded his boots. And what I want to achieve is just remove his armor because once his armor is down, uh, my annoying on hit effects uh, become even more annoying, right? Because all of them are essentially uh, hard to block, right? Like they're like four, five, six. None of that's easy to block. Uh, here I decide to go with uh, isolate. Because isolate just uh, signals I'm coming in for uh, with like a CNC or something like this, and, and it may force him to use his armor. Um, it didn't, right? He he just used the card from hand and then used uh, sink below. But this is once again exactly what I want to see, right? Like he used basically six, seven block uh, in order to block one of my lead no witnesses. And now he has like two less sync belows in order to actually stop my uh, CNC's, um, like dominated CNC's and uh, dominated uh, shakedowns later in the game. Um, he continues coming in with a hammer for four, and I'm either taking the damage or just letting uh, one card uh, trades. Because I'm coming in with E Strike, it takes the card from him, deals the damage. Then another 0 for 4 that is going to threaten a card from the deck as well. He doesn't want to block it with his equipment in a card, he's just going to use Sync Below, and I believe this is his third Sync Below. So, one of the things that you want to be looking out in these matchups for is um, when is the Bravo going to run out of defense reactions and armor? Right, like if you if you manage to run him out of those things while you still have nasty stuff in your deck, you're probably going to win. And if I remember correctly, we're going to be watching exactly this type of game, right? Here I go for it, my um, last E-Strike, I believe, and I'm just going to go for um, Spider's Bite CNC. Um, the reasoning for that is because Spider's Bite CNC just forces him to use a lot of things in order to block, right? If I just go for Dominated CNC, I'm just going to take his arsenal, but instead here I'm taking two cards from him as well as his shield. Um, and I've dealt one damage with the Spider's Bite, right? Um, and like his arsenal is, <laughs> as you can see, really useless because um, Bravo does not really have uh, arsenals that he can just play with one card. Here I'm going to go for Spider's Bite into Nerf Scalpo again. Because there's no reason for me to try and be greedy and play for like a Black Deck Whispers um, line. When I can instead just do this, force him to block with the equipment, play my blue shred to destroy his uh, arm piece and then he's going to come in with the Fateful Scene. I'm debating here if I want to use um, the Flick Knives. Uh, and I, I don't think the flick knife is going to do anything. Um, I'm not sure what I'm debating exactly. But um, this is exactly the point where I love having my defense reactions for, right? Like you see that I've kept this fate for scene in my arsenal for such a long time. Uh, and I believe this is exactly the place where he uh, kind of uses his equipment in order to block my turn, in order to keep a three card hand with arsenal. And. No matter what this trick card hand is, I have Fate foreseen in my arsenal, so I can just take it. Um, turns out his hand is just three red cards that are just bad and he just wants to return a hammer. Uh, which I disagree as a play very much. Uh, but here I'm just going to use Oasis. The reason I'm using Oasis here is because my hand is very, very bad. Um, as well, and I and I just want to cycle my hand as much as possible. So this is a very bad waste for me, but what can you do, right? Like his hand was just as bad. We're going to go for a three damage here, and I want to continue cycling, um, and I want to you know like just push damage, and we see a second fate for scene, and we're just going to gladly banish it. So he's down two fate for scenes, two unmovables, and three seeing belows by now. And it's fairly early in the game, right? He's going to come in with the Tear Sunder, and that's 
very nice. I mean, I have Faithful Sin from my arsenal, so I can just block with the with the Mask and the Faithful Sin. And once again, just having uh, having uh, Faithful Sin uh, and other defense reactions is great. Faithful Sin is going to reveal a Codex in my. Um, on the top of my deck and now I have a sink below to stop the pomo and I'm going to sink this um, I'm going to sink this uh, frailty trap for the codex of frailty that I saw on the top and I believe I'm just going to go for spiders bite spiders bite codex of frailty um, I believe that's the play uh, of the Codex of Frailty, I may get a CNC because I do have like a Fiendo Spring tunic. Uh, but yeah, like uh, if you're if you're playing the control bravos in these situations, uh, what you have to learn is to not shotgun your equipment like that, and to try and keep yourself with arsenal at all times, right? Uh, because this bravo allowed me to just play out my. Codex of Frailties as I saw them, and a lot of the times uh, when I'm playing Bravos, I'll actually cycle them and like play them second cycle or something like this. Uh, but this Bravo is like playing a little bit more aggro than he should. And here he's blocking for like five, but there's already all the daggers, so he has to use his um, he has to use his buckler as well. And I gave him inertia. I'm having a cut to the chase in Arsenal, which is not the best Arsenal. He's going to come in with a CNC, and here um, I'm like, I don't know, I really don't know what to do, right? Like, my hand is kind of garbage, and this is uh, one thing that you kind of have to suffer, right? Um, because you have to be playing the stealth cards, you have to be playing the reaction things, uh, because you saw how much they punish um, my opponent. You know, I destroyed his gloves, um, I inertiaed his uh, arsenal at the start of the game. And here I'm just going to go for isolate, trying to bait him to block more than he should. Didn't happen. Uh, arsenal my sink below and now I'm happy again. I just have a uh, sink below in the arsenal. And with the defense reaction in Arsenal against Bravo, I feel invulnerable. The only thing you're scared uh, when you're playing against the Bravo with the defense reaction in Arsenal is whenever uh, the, the only scary thing is whenever you go for um, uh, is whenever you go for uh, he, he goes for CNC uh, Pomo, but in those situations I believe you can just uh, block 10 with your entire hand in a mask or something like this and just if you're expecting the Pomo uh, and just allow him to Pomo you later when it's not on a CNC and it's just going to be fine. Here I'm just going to swap in the CNC, we're going to destroy a Pomo and he kept his hand and he's going to come in with the Terra Sunder now. And I believe this is his second tier Sunder, but we once again have a sink below. So we're just going to block with the Black Tech Whispers and um, just sink below again. And I believe we're going to get rid of the Frailty Trap yet again, giving us an Isolate. Um, and that's, that's pretty cool, right? And as you can see, the life difference has been uh, shortened, like we are firmly in the lead with like... Uh, Six-ish, maybe like even 10 health actually. Um, and we continue our streak with uh, Fate for Sins in the Arsenal, so we're going to be basically safe again. Uh, we're going for the double daggers once again, he cannot really block this, and then we're going to go for a 0 for 4 that banishes the top card of his deck. And that's going to be very annoying for him. I believe he says no reactions, I'm going to be like, okay, sure, <laughs> if you say so. Right, you, you saw me try to go to the mask a couple of times, but I feel like when you're playing against these uh, heavy defense reactions decks, you have to be very careful when you're actually uh, trying to use your whispers at uh, mask of predictions, because a lot of times they're going to just have a reaction. 
here I'm just going to take um, the 4 damage because I don't care, right? Like I'm very far in the lead in, in terms of cards and I'm um, in the lead in terms of life as well, so just 4 damage. Is like whatever, especially with my with my hand, because I'm going to go for Spider's Bite into Tunic uh, and Annihilate the Armed. And now this Annihilate the Armed is quite hard to block, and I'm going to go for Mask of Perdition here because it's like the highest chance of hitting. I'm going to go for the Black Tech Whispers as well. He seems to be playing absolutely nothing, and now he's going to go for the second stunt response, and I believe this is the. Pro maybe the third stun response since we saw one pitch at the beginning, but maybe we reached the pitch stack, I'm not sure. We haven't because this is um, the, the third uh, frailty we've seen, but you know, I, I held the shreds for so long, right? That was the entire reason. And here we're going to see his third and movable uh, to try and just prevent our turn, but this is extremely fine right like he used two of his uh, defense reactions to just stop our turn and we're back again at just the beginning right like we are once again the tempo is in us and we're just going to go for um, spider's bite he's just going to block it and heal a bit but this is very much fine because we what we care about is like just winning in terms of cards as well. So him using a card in order to block a dagger is very cool. And we did hit him with uh, the nerf scalpel into slay the scores, which is going to basically take two cards of him because he's going to deal one through the block. And we are once again in this extremely safe space where we have like a lot of defense reactions. He's going to come in with a CNC and this is the worst space for us to have uh, CNC against us because we basically can't do anything right we have three defense reactions so we, we can't even block it we can technically use our equipment um, in order to block everything but I'm just going to use like um, shakedown and pitch of fate for scene in order to prevent it and just pass the turn you know like uh, there was nothing I could do offensively during my turn anyway outside of just pitching my entire hand for a shakedown and then just take six damage for no reason when we're this close in life. I just prefer to stay nine points ahead uh, while giving him like a full four card hand but still remaining with like two defense reactions in hand which basically means he can't do nothing to me, right? Like even a dominated crippling crush is just going to get fate for seeing sink below and I'm just going to have like a three card hand uh, on the crackback. He comes in for a no uh, eight. And here I'm probably going to go use one of my defense reactions, but not both. And then during my turn, uh, maybe just go for um, Dagger Shakedown, um, is my assumption, but I guess we'll see. Um, I go to Reaction Step, use Fate for Scene, see the third uh, Dead Touch, put it on the bottom, take four. And yeah, at this point I'm just going to go for like actually double dagger, double dagger into shakedown, uh, which is even smarter, right? Like I'm using my life lead in order to push his life lead even uh, lower. And now this shakedown is going to be very, very difficult to block. I believe he's out of defense reaction at this point in the game uh, or like very close to out of defense reactions. He's going to be like, okay, I'm just going to use staunch response before the flick knife resolves. Um, which is good, right? Like he, he manages to block it. Uh, he kind of tricks me there. But I believe this is the last staunch response. So he's out of he's out of defense reactions, right? And in a moment where he's out of defense reactions, these 0 for 4 plunder runs are going to be very annoying for him, right? Um, they're going to be coming in for uh, breakpoint damage and are going to be stripping cards from the top of his deck even more. He's coming in with another 4 and I believe I I'm probably blocking it with a card here. And uh, using my flick knives there is also okay because um, Nerf Scalpel can like no longer achieve anything, right? 
uh, now that he's out of defense reactions. So yeah, I'm just going to go for Spider's Bite. Uh, pitching the Shred, uh, pitching, yeah, pitching the Shred instead of holding it. I'm not sure if it really matters, right? I'm just going to go for an Isolate here. Um, but yeah, the, the game, the game just seems very, very much won, right? Um, I have not really amassed any silver to buy back my equipment in order to be able to use like the three block plus one block plus like sink below or something like this. But I have the flick knives that are now kind of useless anyway. He's going to go for like block one exactly with the spirit. I'm going to just swap it in. Deal three damage, banish a card. We are very equal in terms of cards, uh, but we still have Remembrance and we are like at 7 life in the lead or something like this. He's going to shorten this with, um, with this sigil, but it doesn't really matter because we are just going to like gain the tempo again, right? Like he, he's not really achieving anything here. We're going to go for Dagger into another Isolate, I believe. This is his third fighting spirit, which continues healing him. But once again, life doesn't really matter because as you can see, we're like now five cards ahead. We're then going to use the Uzuri here. We're going to banish yet another card. So we've banished like four cards from him. He has used three cards to heal. He has used three cards to uh, just block Daggers. And now he's going to go for nine. Um, and at this point, I'm just going to block 3, use the sink below for Arsenal. Just very comfortably block the entire damage and go for um, Spider's Bite into Annihilate the Armed. Which is going to be once again very difficult for him to block. I mean, technically he, can, he still has like 3 block and he's probably going to use it here because like there's no more time left to use it basically. He chooses to just block two. Uh, we're going to get our second silver and finally Crippling Crush. Uh, coming in for 11, no dominate, but we do not care, right? Why we, we talked about this the entirety of the game. Um, just these defense reactions in the arsenal, cycle between them. Uh, try to never run out of defense reactions and whenever he keeps a hand like this we just go for um, we just go for the blockade and we do not care. And here is just going to be the game winning turn right. Uh, we're going to isolate a death touch, uh, give him blood rot, give it go again, play um, the codex, force him to discard a card and then attack with a death touch out of the tunic. The, the, main, the main takeaways from this are just uh, play the value game, do use your daggers a lot, uh, but do not overuse them, right? Like, you do not just use your entire hand to just dagger him twice without actually applying any kind of pressure. And most importantly, just keep defense reactions in the arsenal uh, at all times, uh, just to be able to absorb these uh, tears under turns or crippling crush turns whenever they come. Uh, and that's about it. See ya. Bye bye.